Hey guys, Stephen here from Heresy Academy. <clears throat> we're going to dive straight back into coding our ball. I'm just going to explain what it is we're going to do. Just clicking W to get the move tool. I think I explained this once in this series. Uh, these five tools here Q, W, E, R, and T, just to quickly uh, keyboard shock for them. So if you ever clicked something and then miraculously it turned into that and that and you didn't realise what I'd clicked, I'm just doing the key buttons. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to essentially, um, what would you call it, we'll call it at the dead zone or something, uh, when the ball hits the bottom of the screen. Also you can do the bottom, the sides of the paddle, obviously the bottom of the paddle, although you'll never reach the bottom of the paddle. Um, and we'll do this. Um, by referencing these two scripts, our game edge and our paddle. So in the last video, I think it was, um, I, I pointed out that you're going to have to make sure you reference the, the correct names for these. Um, and I said I'd mention it again when it comes to that part. So what we're going to do, um, when when it came to making the game edge, I explained about making the square and using the points 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, stuff like that. We're going to reference, find a reference for this one line here, which will actually be vector two point up, or vector two dot up, sorry. And then that'll be the same for this collider. If we can just view the collider there. So the top line here is your vector two dot up. And then for our screen limit, this will be vector two dot up as well. So what we'll do, we'll go straight to our ball script, so open this up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, Notepad++, whatever it is you're using, just open this up. The only things we're going to actually change will be down in the On Collision Enter 2D. We don't need to worry about anything in the start, anything above the start or the update function at this time. So straight away we'll dive in and we want to make a reference for the game edge and the paddle. So game edge is our it says here public class so if you get stuck and you've got them all open at the top what we're looking for is this one the one that creates our edge collider and this one which controls our paddle i'm just saying this just in case you've uh, you've named them different because this this used to catch me out all the time i would follow someone's tutorial and i didn't want to uh i didn't want to do it exactly the same i wanted to do things a bit differently uh, i'd put different names for things or let's say I was making a completely different game, so someone would put this to be the platform and everything I needed was the same, except to me it would have been paddle sort of thing. So make sure we reference our game edge script here and we'll just we'll just call it game edge with a lowercase g and then this will equal collider then dot game object because the game objects that we've just collided with and then we'll do dot get component oh, not get e. get our get component and just to prevent myself from forgetting to put anything there I've just done the, the more more than less than sign of the parentheses and the semicolon the component we want to get will be game edge uh, just quickly jumping in back down here now our screen, screen limit here um, <laughs> Although it's uh, what's it called? It's called screen limit here. It's called game edge, and this is the component we're trying to get. So what we've collided with will be any part of this, any part of the screen limit. So it would make sense to call this game edge, just to make sure we're not getting anything confused. So we'll call that game edge, just so we know now we are colliding with game edge, and then. We're getting the component game edge here. I hope this isn't confusing because I said game edge like 50 times. Um, we we'll to make sure we do the exact same thing about paddle. Let's call it paddle. Same as we just same as just above. I'm gonna go game object dot get component and then more than less than semicolon. I've got two there for some reason. And inside here we'll get the component paddle. Me and if if you're looking and you think, well, oh, these aren't changing color, the collider here is this uh, the, the, the name of our reference here, which is our collision 2D. So, the 2D object that we've just collided with, then we get the game object of it, then we get the, the component game edge. 
what we want to do next um, is we're going to get a reference for our normal. I explained it in the last video. Um, hoping it'll come up with a quick thing. No, I was hoping it would come up with a hint for you. Basically, it's it's a vector two. Oh, there. It's a public vector two. Um, so we will create a vector two and we'll call it normal. Reason for this is because we will reference this shortly. And then this will equal our collider dot contacts then the array of zero oh, the square brackets not the curly ones and then dot normal like that uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a bool and for now we'll call it game over we may change it afterwards it completely depends on what we want what sort of style we want to make now a bool as you'll see, it's a slightly different color than Vector2. Uh, it's the same color as you'll see as the flow integer and the words new. What a bool is, um, it's a true or false variable. So it can either be true or false. Um, and I'll explain this with what we're doing here with the game over. So we'll just call it game over there. You can call this again, whatever you want. And we'll set this to false. Um, the reason we're setting it to false is because as soon as we collide with something, we want to make sure that game over is false. Um, I mean, you could start up here and say game over is false. But like obviously when you start the game, it's just started, it's not a game over situation. And then take this out completely. But here we're going to put it down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement. And the if is going to check our, where is it now? Oh, my edge, our game edge. And we're going to check that it is not null, meaning that you know we've just activated it, we've, we've collided basically. Open up our curly brackets. It helps if we write null as well, because it's kind of what we need. Null there. Then inside here, all we're going to do is if our normal, so the normal that we've just created, then make sure it's equal to vector two dot up. Now don't get confused, in a minute we're going to make sure something is not vector 2 up as well. And I'll explain that as we've done it. Um, obviously what we want to do, just for now, open our curly brackets. And we'll set game over equal to true. Because uh, this is now our game edge and our vector 2 up is the bottom line. So if we've hit the bottom line, if we have done it, so normal equals the vector 2 up. Um, as well, if you don't remember me explaining the normals, if you consider the line, uh, we go back to unity again. Oh, let's not do that. Got the ball. So if you remember, I explained like the, the line here. Oh dear me. The line here, the normal is the, the right angle coming off it. So the normal of our bottom edge is our vector 2 up because the line is going up, if that makes sense. And that's why uh, that's why the bottom edge of this one and the top edge of this one are the same thing because they're both going up. Whereas, just moving our paddle a second, the normal of the bottom edge would be vector 2 dot down. Let's move our ball along, put it back. Put the ball back over there, it's fine. Okay, so yeah, we want to make sure that we are hitting the vector 2 to up in this one, and then after this, we'll, uh, we'll do an else if statement because we're not going to hit our we're not going to hit the wrong part of the paddle and hit the game edge at the same time, so we can do an else if, and we'll just write this one paddle, and then we will. Put in our curlies again. I hate when it does this, it automatically readjusts things. It's not the way I want to do it. It just automatically tries to uh, sort of keep your code compact as possible with it, with, whilst making it readable. There. So, our else if statement now, um, we want to now check if our normal, and then we make sure it's not, um, not to vector 2 dot up. Same again, we'll go for game over 
is true. So here we're checking to make sure that the vector2.up is normal. I'm pointing this out just in case you've you've missed it and you've just copied is not normal, is not normal. Uh, is not vector two, sorry. So on the game edge, we want it to be vector two to up, we want it to be the bottom line to trigger game over. And on our paddle, we want it to be anything but the vector two. So if we collide with our paddle and it's not the top line, we'll just trigger our game over event or function code, bool, whatever we want to call it. And then, uh, just simply enough now, if our game over is correct, open up our curlers. And what we'll do for this, we'll just set it as our, uh, set it as game over. So for this, we'll just use application.load level. And then, uh, I think a level is one. One. We're using application at load level here because uh, we're not going to just completely keep reloading our level. We will put in a game over screen or we'll lose a life or something like that. And this is underlined in red for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why that's underlined in red. Bugging me. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do, everything else, we'll put it inside an else statement. So basically, so if it's not that, and if it's not that, and it's not that, then we'll do this. And what we'll do is quite simple. Just delete that back. There we go. Because then, if it's not, if it's not game over here, it's not game over there, so if it isn't game over at all, we'll just carry on bouncing. So we'll save our script. I've got a feeling that I've missed something out here now. Um, I'll just quickly run it, see if it gives it a general idea of what I may have missed. Why are you expecting this? That's not correct, is it? Oh dear, we may, may have just broken our. Uh... <laughs> okay, right, yeah. Very bad. I've completely missed something out here. So get rid of that some colon. Um, <laughs> I was just completely forgot. What you need to do is, is you need to write if. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize it's an if statement. Like that. Because we are checking if the normal is not vector 2. I completely I said if and then I forgot to write it. Save that. And just run it one more time now. It'll probably pop up and say this is obsolete, but that's fine because we're not going to keep using this. Yeah, we've got two warnings, we're absolutely fine there. Drop that, drop back to uh, Unity. What we can do as well, we can get rid of these bricks because we'll, uh, I'm going to show you the script soon to make the bricks decide where to go, how to go, you know, automatically put the bricks in, and then we'll also put them into parented object, make it a bit cleaner. So yeah, we'll get rid of our bricks here. Um, not not to forget that we've obviously got our prefabs here and stuff like that. And we'll set this transform, put it back to its zero there, minus two. Oh. There we go. Sorry, I had an unlock off. So check that back to zero. Okay, so we're gonna save this off now. And you'll see it bounce up and bounce along, and it'll come down, it'll come to a game over, and it'll refresh our scene. Could still follow the mouse, but I'll use the arrow keys. That's probably a good idea. We'll move over to the game screen. Oh, hang on. We just left. Why did it just leave? It's got rigid body, hasn't it? It's got rigid body, got no gravity. Got a collider. You're right, you just leave. Oh no no, he's bouncing. But he still bounces out for some reason. 
Oh, yes, I think I found that last, the last video. But as you'll see, it reset the sea when it hit the bottom. Yeah, it does bounce. Yep, yeah, resets the scene, bounces, resets the scene, bounces, bounce, bounce. I wonder why I was jumping out a minute ago. There must be something I'm missing. Um, but as you can see, it's bouncing around now, absolutely fine. Oh, it just bounced back out there. Right, so there's a bug somewhere, so I'll go and hunt in a moment. Um, but that's it, that's how you set it up. So as you see, it hits the bottom. And it's very rare, but if it hits the side, the paddles, it's just in case. I mean, if you've got if it got it, yeah, if you've got it coming down here and it hits the side of the paddle, it's gonna go down anyway. So you may as well put a game over script onto it. So just imagine now if you look over on this screen, it comes down, it's just gonna bounce down to there. All it's gonna do is gonna come down this way. So just save you that one split second, you know. You can you could leave it off and ignore that piece, uh, piece of code and just have it sort of bounce down and it just hits the bottom line. And to do that, you just take out your, all your paddle stuff here. So ignore that warning. Take out your paddle stuff. Um, you know, just take out this as well. Just every statement there, make it make game over true. If the game over, and do this stuff like that. But yeah, um, we'll be changing this around so we'll actually load up like a game over screen. Or even if you wanted to do a, um, a live system, so you got like three lives or just two lives, you know, or five lives, I can teach you how to do that. Um, I think in the next video we'll uh, see if we can figure out that bug. If I can figure it out, then I'll show you what it is. What it could be, just real quick now, where is it now? The ball. Maybe it's the velocity of the ball. What's that down to five? I don't know if it is, but maybe it's hitting the collider and trying its best to push through and it's going too quick. Maybe, I don't know. We'll, have, we'll see now. <clears throat> If this has fixed it, I'll be pretty amazed. Because what I'm thinking, if the, velo the velocity is too high, it's moving too quick, it's trying to push out. See now, trying to get to hit them corners. That's up. Uh, it looks alright to me now, to be fair. It's rather, rather, rather odd. Let's see if it bounces down there. No? Okay. So, it seems that I've just turned down the velocity a little bit. So, I'll half it to five. So, let's try it. You can try it at seven. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Yeah. So, that seems to be why it was pointing through. Unless there's something else I've missed. Because um, the game edge, even though there's a little gap in this one here, it sets itself up so it's perfectly aligned in each corner of the camera. So that's how you get to do the game over screen. Uh, you could do it another way. Uh, you could basically set up a blank object and just line it at the bottom of the screen and have it so if you collide with that, that's game over instead. So a similar way here, you do that. Uh, let's say your object was called, let's think what you'd call it. Mm. You don't want to do a game edge. Let's just well, you just call it dead zone or something. You'd reference in dead zone, call it dead zone that equals the collider dot game object, blah blah blah. Make sure you get these components. And then the same thing over here now. If you if you've collided with paddle or you could collide it with the game edge, you know, you could do it that way. So you just you sort of forget this whole game edge thing here, swap it out for one object and hit it instead. Do that. Uh that's about it for now, I think. So, yes, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, obviously, you can thumbs it down. Um, leave me a comment, see what I've done wrong. Uh, like, I'm trying to sort of try and keep things fresh. Um, I'm not just writing a script and decide, right, this is what I'm going to say exactly. So, sometimes, even my code, I think I mentioned in the last video, um, I make myself some notes, but I don't write out all the code. I'm not fortunate enough to have a second screen to, to look across to. Um, I will do one day, don't, don't get me wrong, That's, that'll be a great way to sort of look across, get the code exactly how it works. Uh, so I'll just jotting down some notes. So yeah, so I will come across errors, uh, I'm not a perfect coder anyway. Um, and I'm pretty sure you'd prefer it this way, sort of, uh, when, you, when you meet an error, sort of go, oh, what's this? And then have an explanation, rather than go, oh, what's this? And I'll turn off the recording, and then I'll fix it and say, right, so what you need to do is this. You can sort of... 
if, if there's a big area, you could see me trying to test out a few things, see how it works, um, stuff like that. Um, and if there are things you need to know, like the application load level, um, in one of the old videos, I think when we set up the menu, I used application load level code, even though it's obsolete, I used it at the end of that video, and then I released another video showing you the scene management, because um, at that time I was thinking not to do videos too, too long, so I was thinking, right, it's, it's drowning on a bit, I'll just quickly jump that in, and then I'll explain the scene management. But as you can see, my videos are getting a bit longer. Um, I, I, I explain things, I try and explain things. Sometimes I might just explain things so much that you just get more confused. If that's the case, leave a comment and I can, you know, hopefully explain or um, grab a load of questions, put them into a video, answer them or something like that. But yeah, that's it for this video. So please, you know, hit the subscribe button. Um, you can see the, the next videos. And uh, yeah, hope to catch you watching the next one. Have a good day.